The Limits of Stability, or LOS test, is a test of voluntary motor control for balance. It provides a discriminant addition to the balance assessment test battery. The Limits of Stability test quantifies the maximum distance a person can intentionally displace their center of gravity. In other words, how far can the patient lean their body in any given direction without losing balance, stepping, or reaching for assistance? A normal sway envelope is 12 and a half degrees in the anterior posterior direction, eight degrees forward, four and a half degrees backward. It also includes eight degrees to the left and eight degrees to the right. Research supports the use of the limits of stability test in the core assessment of patients with mobility impairments. Normal limits of stability performance is associated with normal range of motion, strength, and proprioception in the lower extremities. Patients who perform poorly on the limits of stability test may have an increased risk of falling. Their limits of stability test may show delayed reaction times, slower movement velocity, or uncontrolled center of gravity movements. These patients may present with difficulties performing certain weight transfer tasks, such as leaning forward to take objects from a shelf or leaning backward to rinse their hair in the shower. All patients are candidates for the limits of stability test. Voluntary movement is an important consideration for safety and independence, as well as athletic performance. Therefore, this test is recommended for all patients as part of the core assessment. Because the limits of stability test is a test of voluntary movement, it requires that the patient be able to follow specific instructions. If the patient is unable to follow these instructions, the clinician may consider the use of the rhythmic weight shift as an alternative to the limits of stability test. In this case example, we have a 56-year-old woman who is status post rehab for a left total hip replacement. She presents with continued difficulty walking. The test results clearly show reduced movement in the leftward direction, as reflected by abnormal maximum and endpoint excursion scores. The prolonged reaction time and decreased velocities could reflect her reluctance to move quickly, perhaps due to fear, due to pain, or both. The limitations measured on the limits of stability test relate to gait and movement control for functional impairment and serve as an excellent outcome measure post-treatment. The limits of stability test can be performed on the static force plate systems, the Balance Master and the VSR Sport, as well as on the Smart Dynamic Systems, the Smart Balance Master and the Smart Equitest. The following is a demonstration of the limits of stability performed on the VSR Sport Portable Balance Solution. We are now going to run through the limits of stability test. I have my patient already pulled up on the system and from the assessment menu, I'm going to click on the limits of stability and then click on continue. You'll see when you click on the limits of stability test, the first screen that comes up is a list of instructions. The first instruction gives you detailed information on how to place the patient's feet in the standardized foot position. Standardized foot position is critical for test-retest reliability. If you forget how to place the patient's feet, you can always click on this green circle and a video will play to remind you how to place the patient's feet. The instructions tell me that I need to place his medial malleolus or the inside of his ankle bone over the wide line on the force plate, the horizontal line. To check this placement, I can just put my mouse up against his ankle bone and make sure that his foot placement is aligned appropriately. The next instruction talks about his lateral calcaneus or the outside of his heel. And that should be lined up with the T-line. And you can see the T-line on both sides of the force plate. Once I make sure that he is in the appropriate foot placement, I know that his test-retest reliability will be much improved because I have the standardized foot placement for all the tests I will run on him today and in the future.
Now that he is in the standardized foot placement, I want to ask him to please try not to move your feet. Keep your toes and your heels flat on the force plate throughout the test. I'm going to click on continue. And the instructions for this test are a little bit challenging. Before we start, I want to make sure that my patient understands his part of this test. So what I want you to notice is that there is a little blue figure in the middle of the screen. That figure is you. So if you shift your weight around without moving your feet, you'll see that he moves. I can help my patient understand how to move the cursor on the screen by putting my hands on him and saying, I want you to come forward and see what happens. I want you to lean back and see what happens. That way, I am sure that he understands that he controls the movement of the cursor. The normative data for this test was collected after a practice trial. So I want to make sure my patient practices getting toward each target before we start the test. So what I'd like you to do is shift your weight forward so that the cursor moves toward target number one. Wonderful. And come back to the center. Great. And what I'd like you to do is practice going out toward each of those targets. That's wonderful. It's very important to make sure that your patient understands they do not have to get all the way out to each target. In fact, the targets are set at 100% of the patient's theoretical limit of stability, meaning if they are actually in the target, they should be just on the edge of falling. Oftentimes, what a patient will do is they will try so hard to get into the target that they will overextend their balance, causing themselves to lose balance before the trial ends. You always want to tell the patient, only go as far as you can and hold that position. You don't want them to be overshooting their limit and then taking a step and losing their balance. Okay, do you understand the understand. movement? Great. So this test is also measuring speed, reaction time, and accuracy. So the cue to move, the cue that you should start moving toward the target is that blue circle in the center is going to move into the yellow target number one. As soon as you see that move, that circle go, that's your cue to move. Okay? Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, start right in the center target and you're going to hold steady until you see the blue circle move. Great, and only go as far as you can hold comfortably and keep holding, wonderful. And go ahead back into the center. That was great. We're gonna do that same thing all the way around. It's very important that you start in the center square before you move to the next target. Hold steady in the center till the blue circle moves. What you'll notice is I am not telling him to go. I am not giving him a verbal cue to go to the target. And the reason for that is because if I give him a verbal cue, it's actually going to add time to the test. I want to measure his reaction time, and his reaction time is based on the movement of that blue circle, not on my cue. If I have a patient who's having a lot of trouble, doesn't see the blue circle move, or is having trouble with their uh, reaction, then I might give them an additional verbal cue, but then I won't be able to use the reaction time values when I analyze the data. I'm keeping an eye on him to make sure he's safe during the test. He is an athlete, and so I am looking for speed and accuracy in his movements. I do want to make sure that he doesn't lose his balance and that he's not overshooting his capability. Great. You're doing okay? Mm -hmm. You need a break or anything? Great. Okay, we'll keep going. As soon as that blue circle moves, great. Hold steady there. He's getting out very well to each one of the targets. 
He's holding steady. Occasionally, you might get an error message that says your patient was not in the center square at the start of the trial, or they moved too quickly. And do you want to repeat that trial? If you see an error message that asks you if you want to repeat the trial, always say yes. You want to repeat the trial because if you don't, you won't have a full data set and you won't be able to analyze your data appropriately. We have now completed the limits of stability test. The computer is asking me, all trials have been performed. Do you want to close this test now? I can say yes or I can say no. If I say yes, I can't go back and repeat any of the trials. If I say no, I would be able to go back and repeat trials if I felt like that was necessary. Now that the test is complete, it's time to analyze the results. This is an example of the report generated by the system. While reviewing the results of the limits of stability test, it is important to keep the following key questions in mind. Number one, is there a problem with voluntary movement control? Number two, what are the specific impairments? And number three, what are the next steps? Let's review the results of the limits of stability test. The quality of movement control is quantified by the directional control, or DCL. Directional control is a comparison of the amount of movement exhibited by the patient in the intended direction, or the direction toward the target, compared to the amount of extraneous movement, or movement away from the target. This value is expressed as a percentage. Values can be interpreted as the percent accuracy of the self-initiated movement and are compared to age-matched normative values. Values approaching 100% indicate a straight path toward the target. Values below 100% indicate the amount or percentage of the distance that the individual is off the intended path a comparison of on-axis versus off-axis movement. The EPE, or endpoint excursion values, tell us how far an individual can shift or lean their center of gravity toward the theoretical limit of 100% in each of the eight movement directions. They're trying to do this without loss of balance, falling, or taking a recovery step. The endpoint excursion is a measure of the actual cone of stability or movement limit achieved by the patient during the task. The endpoint excursion provides a measure of how far the patient is willing to move on their first attempt shifting toward the target. A clinician might consider this suggestive of the individual's perception of their own safety limits. Conversely, the MXE, or maximum excursion, tells us how far the patient can actually move their center of gravity. Both measures are expressed as a percentage of the maximum theoretical limit of stability. EPE and MXE measures are compared to age-matched normative performance values. Individuals who achieve these values can be considered to have lower extremity range of motion, strength, and proprioception within functional limits. Theoretically, the EPE and the MXE percentages should be the same or very close in value. This is particularly true when movement precision and accuracy are the goal, such as in high-performance individuals. You may recall the instructions to the patient are to move as quickly as possible toward each limits of stability target when the cue to move appears. The reaction time and movement velocity scores provide quantification of movement timing components of self-initiated movement and anticipatory postural control. High velocity scores are good, lower velocity scores are worse. Measured in seconds, the reaction time reflects the onset of intentional patient movement toward the target, as distinct from random movements while waiting for the cue to move. 
This is defined as the point in time at which the patient's center of gravity moves beyond the area occupied during the two seconds following the start of the trial, but prior to the cue to move. Impairments in reaction time measures indicate delays in the patient's ability to move on command. Presented in degrees per second, the movement velocity value, MVL, provides information regarding the average speed of the center of gravity movement to the target in degrees per second. The MVL quantifies 5 to 95% of the distance from the center to the target, thus excluding the acceleration and deceleration components in the calculation. Finally, this chart provides guidance on how to use impairment findings to drive medical management and rehabilitation planning following analysis of the limits of stability test. Thank <laughs> you.